All right, they're going to move there, yeah. Club here in North Dublin. We have two of the finest kickers in the land. I'm not one of them, Sean O'Shea and Shane Walsh. We've also got Tyg Leader, who's been playing American football in America and in Canada over the last couple of years. Tyg's gonna be running the lads through some place kicks that are in American football. We'll see how good they are with that as well. Keep an eye out for this, it's gonna be good. What are you trying to do with your body? Are you trying to set yourself before you strike the ball? Or are you trying if I'm going to striking here? Just say, you know, there's an attack on, you're in play, you're you're moving. Mm -hmm. It's easy when, not easy, but you have a structure when you're taking a place kick. When you're taking a shot from play, is there a, a cue you're getting your body in? Are you bouncing a ball before you strike? Um, what are you doing to get yourself set? It probably depends on the situation, really, okay. how much time you have. Uh, I actually don't like having too much time. Really? You know, if you have too much time, you can think about it too much, so just trying to get it and make your decision. If you're kicking, you're kicking and yeah. just turn back it. Like, and, and go for it, like. It's probably a, a great spot for a right footer here. Yes. And they're just coming away, away from the defence a bit and kicking towards have the ball. Have you a sweet spot? Nice. Uh, Kieran Whelan used to love right at a D and he bombed yeah, it over the you, bar. You wouldn't like to think so, but you probably do if you go if you go back to the shots. But um, yeah. this would probably be a, a nice area for right for the right thing, just right at the D. Yeah. Kind of curled in a bit and okay. you know, defend it by coming away. And what are you doing? Are you keeping the head over the ball always? Like I know it's probably instinctive, but is it ranting in your head when you're running through the strike? Not really, no. It's probably just natural, you know. Most yeah. of memory just gets you there, so yeah. whatever feels right at the time. And obviously we're against the breeze here, so you need to put it that bit more out to the right because it's going to come back into the breeze with a, a right footed hook, hook kick. So just throw it outside the right post and leave the, leave the wind do the rest, I think. What about the follow through? Yeah, I probably keep the head down, but again, that's a natural thing. You don't really think about it, I'm going to keep my head down here. But you say it's natural, but it's not. It's, it's practiced. Like Yeah, I suppose it is, yeah. yeah. But I uh, like the... You've got Obviously, to the stage in, a, now, in a big game, the temptation's there to as soon as you kick, see shit, where's that going? Is it going out of air or not? Like, so, um, but you just have to trust. Just keep the head down. You, you, it only takes it's a split second to keep the head down, but we'll follow through. But um, you'll see where it goes after. You're under pressure now. <laughs> would, you, would you often aim, I guess the wind is say, would you often aim like kind of outside the post and trust it to come in, say? Because in American football, for example, we're told never aim outside the post because, you know, sometimes you catch a ball really flush and the wind maybe doesn't drag it as much as you think. That's something, that's something I've learned with football. American football. Yeah, no, it, it's probably a different game. Like, I nearly always, I'm always aiming for, like, the outside of the post. Like, so and if it was my right foot here, I'm going for the outside of the right post there because literally I'm saying the goal is about seven metres wide. So like I straight away, I have a chance of the ball coming back in seven metres yeah. because my cut, cut, kick you know, is, it comes on the instep and you yeah, curl it in. Yeah. Whereas if I kick towards the middle of the goal, yeah, I'm, I've only whatever, three, three to four metres like so. Yeah. That's generally why I do, but it doesn't always work. Give us another look at it, so. <laughs> Yeah. What's perfect, what I find kind of perfect is though that like if you're trying to be narrow down, especially taking freeze, I go like from the middle of the goal to the right post, they're the only ones that count really. And what about like, would there ever be a time when you're on this side where you'd move your body and you hit it with the outside of your boot? Probably not coming from this position. Yeah. Um, if you do that like especially do you think that's just for optics? No, it depends on the situation. If you're coming from outside the 45 maybe, but if you're here and you're taking a dummy solar or something, Generally, the bodies are in the D, and they're coming out towards you. So yes. around this area, you probably just have to go and get rid of the ball. If you are dummy, you're probably moving onto your left end, but the outside of the right is probably for that bit further out, I think, in or else cutting in from the line. But if you dummy here and you're going off outside the right, the bodies, I think, are generally coming towards you, so it's probably not on as much. How's your strike off the left? And inside? Yeah, what's it like? like do you, very is similar, it, I think. Is it the exact yeah, same very similar. Right like? um, did you work on that? Oh, you have to, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you've been you're working as much as you can, obviously. I'd have obviously the right legs preferred, but you know, I'd be generally, I'd, I'd be comfortable shooting off the left of the. That was the standard in the All Ireland final, you could just see it, but just an ability to move off both sides. Yeah. It's so clear mm -hmm. now in inter county football, you need it. Like. Especially with, like you saw, the in inside forwards there in the All Ireland, like David Clifford for us and Killian Splank coming on, then stroke going off his left, no bother at all, like just, just backing it. And it's, probably, it's so natural to them now as well. Though. Who's the toughest man to take on in a one on one? <sighs> I'd probably say Lee Keegan it would have been when I started off my career, but I feel like I turned the corner with him. I'm, I'm, I'm holding that That's one. That's interesting. On That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas, um, like, in fairness, like the 
Derry, Connor uh, McCluskey, like he, I couldn't get over how quick he was. To be honest, I didn't know much about him. And now, like you know, if Damo wasn't probably going as well that day, I probably would have went inside and challenged him a different way. But because Damo was there, I actually kind of enjoyed kind of a game inside of my game that people would say is weak. Like you know, I was, I think I had our highest tackles that day. But like he was actually, I couldn't get over just how he was actually staying. Like he was constantly there. What did McCluskey do to you? Like he, as a defender, like he he just he, well, he just he just he didn't drive in and he, he just like because he was quick enough though as well. But see, the big thing for me that happened at the start of the game that was in my mind was my first ball I got. I was run up along the line and I think I checked back and like I slipped and there was two lads waiting behind me. So like normally what I would do when I'm going on a run, I'd be weaving yes. and like kind of asking questions of him. Whereas I was kind of saying I'm going to try and outrun you here rather and like. Again, it's hard enough to outrun an inch country footballer now these days, even though I know sometimes you will do it, but like there is lads out there that are designed to run with you. Whereas like if I if that was again, like Jerry's blanket defence kinda of helps that because you kinda of know that someone whereas Joe you know, again I'd be kinda of saying I'd be probably standing them up yes. and asking them a question then like, you know. So when the ball's running down the Hogan stand side early on in the All Ireland final, you pick it up and you've got the two boys. I actually think Shawnee O'Shea was close enough to you. He, oh yeah, he was, yeah. Like, are you going through? Your, are, have you mapped out where you're going with that? You want to bring it a certain, like you want to bring it a certain, like to get into a scoring zone. Yes. And like for me, it was funny. Like I was saying, like the goals. Like when I look back, it's, I was only Monday evening. I saw the shots again. Like and you're kind of saying, if you, if you saw them before a game, you you'd be saying, I'm not going to kick those. But like when you're kind of, I knew when the first ball I got, I was on it. Like I had a feeling I was going to be like on it in the day. But like you enjoy, you can always say, oh, I feel on. It, but if it doesn't happen for you, but I was kind of saying that if I feel on it now. Like the next thing, all of a sudden, the goal seemed wider and everything seemed shorter. And next thing, Joe, you're, you're just you're saying I'm hot. Like you know, when you're hot, I'm Joe. I know you know your range. Like so, in the zone, in the flight, flow. Like as in, like after a while, once I start kicking, I know where the posts are, so I know exactly what I'm doing. And like if he doesn't come near me, I'm kicking the ball over him, kicking over the bar. Like your first point from play, you kind of do you shove your man off a bit and give yourself a bit of room? Yeah, he was he was tugging me the, in the shorts. I think his nickname was Tugs as well. Yeah, but, uh, I kind of just got a, got a little handoff, and John, in fairness, John Daly loves he loves those balls and just give me a nice ball into space. And I think he was waiting for me to take him on because I was going to shift to go inside him, and he kind of waited, so I just shifted back, and it was. You know, is, I got ten yards. Of is space. that when you knew you were on it? Oh yeah. That that was when you knew you were like on that, it. Like that, like as soon as I kicked that, I was like. If I can get as much ball here, because like I was saying, going into it, I know Tom's a good defender, but I was saying I was fancying that all day, like so. You might talk me through your style of striking here. I, I was just showing you the video of you taking the shot against Perjarlitz against Coleman's back in 2011, Hogan Cup final, and it was from a very similar area as the point in the second half, off your right, where you a bit of a step here, the exact same kicking technique. Have you all, is that just always the way you've kicked the ball? Yeah, it's just always the way I kick the like, and that's that's the thing, like, because you always go close just before you go kicking, like, because essentially I need this bit of space, so I know if someone's coming up to me, I can kind of run along, and next thing, all of a sudden, I can just make a little bit of contact, and like, all I need is two yards. I don't need a big back swing. Mm. So like, as soon as I get that, next thing I'm saying, I see where the goals are, and yeah, sure you're lining up the shot, like so. The arm yeah. going back is that balance? Is that what is that? Is that just yeah, used to kicking it like that, or yeah, what no, it's it's, it's balance, like it's balance. Like, essentially, like, if you're kicking the ball like this, it's kind of it's hard to get your follow through on it. Whereas like when your arm comes up, that's your balance. And I was even saying you can use the defender then because if you're getting close to somebody and you're going into goal, you can kind of hold him. Yes. And he's nearly saying you're nearly using him as your balance then, and he can kind of kick off him. Okay. So rather than letting him put you off, because some defenders, some people that wouldn't be as comfortable kicking, they're actually easy enough. You go in and give them a tip, and next thing, like. No offense, uh, no offense to the defenders, but like when you see a defender coming, if you give them a tip, normally they're not used to it, and the kick is, is kind line. of a rash kick, like you know. But yeah. uh, no, not all defenders are like that. Huh? And when did you bring that power into your game, that bit of strength? You didn't always have that, did you? No, it was funny. I like I wasn't even that quick up until tw 2015 is when I started to notice. I start like the fitness training started getting harder, but the speed work was getting easier. Okay. And. But again, it's it's weird because like if I think about running quick, I don't run that fast. Whereas it just like when I get the ball, like like in even our strength conditions we've been given out because like I run quicker with the ball than I do without the ball. Okay. And they're kind of saying you should be running quicker without the ball than with the ball. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a funny one that I don't know I don't know the mindset or what it is, but um, yeah, it's just and like from then you're kind of Joe, you know you have that tool then and. I always say like you can't rely on the one tool all the time. Joe, so if you become a one trick pony. A lot of defenders will say, "Oh, yeah, I'm going to sit off you." Yeah. And I've seen that as I start to learn football. Like so I you're Sean analyzing defenders too, like. Well, that Joe, yeah, because like Sean, like Sean McDermott was the first one that did it to me in 2016. He he was marked, but he literally he got whoever was marked me. David Murray I think it was got switched off me. 
because he was getting tight and I was just running past him. Yeah. Sean McDermott was literally saying, I was getting the ball out to the halfway. He was running, Come at me. he was nearly saying, I'm going over here, so you're gonna you're eventually gonna run up to me here because the yeah. goal's back here, like so. Okay. It's it's different like that because I, I always say if a defender comes to meet me, that's happy days for me, like whereas okay. you know, if they if they stand off you, I, I always Lee Keegan never did it and he was always kind of quick enough and strong enough to stay with hold you. you off. Yeah, yeah. Like, even like the point in the in Pierce Stadium when there was the the, during lockdown, during lockdown. Like he, he kind just of literally put his head down and just stayed with me the whole way. Like, and, like he made me have to kick a very difficult shot. Like, so yeah. where instead of kind of saying I'm going to run in across here, tire, lunge in them, he literally stayed in the game. He stayed in it, like. and like, Joe, it just made, it makes it so much more challenging for you because if you get a defender that kind of commits to trying to stop you, it's a lot easier than to Joe. You know, like when they come in to dive in, you, it's a lot you can take them on, like, to, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, so. after you. <laughs> Wins here up in Vincent's are, are You'll have to get used to that. Yeah. <laughs> Mine come this far north side now, you never know. The wind in Crow Park, the wind going into the Hill 16 goes, is it is it real like? Is it is it is it really bad there like? It always looks like it's strong. Did you kicked into the goals? It's more, was more than coming at you though. Like yeah. I, even before the final, I was out and we were throwing up grass and it was going it was going into the canal in one way and then into the hill. And I think that day it was nearly easier to kick into the hill. Yeah, like we, it, it, you we, had you had great shots in the first half and even I don't know we missed that much in the second half, but the first half into the canal we missed an awful lot. All of in the shots. final yeah, day. Yeah. It's the higher up though, it's the higher up that goes into the hill I found, like even from Joe Warm like little things like that, but like when it goes high up the wind does take it more. Okay. Like and you can allow for the curve and kicking high, whereas like Joe, generally speaking, I don't think it has a huge impact on, on the game at all. Like and it normally comes down, what I've noticed is it comes down the Hogan and kinda of comes in around the canal okay. and can make the, the canal's always trickier because of the the stand behind it, yeah. and everyone thinks it's close and what it is. Do you find it trickier that side? A lot of people I heard say that it's, it's actually easier to shoot into the canal. You, you, t you take it for granted, you see, and that's what that's the thing. You take it as an easier shot, but then like all of a sudden, then you just you're, you're not you're, you don't go through. You're kind of you're yeah, you're, you're like I suppose you're more focused kicking into the hill because everyone says that's the toughest bush, and everyone says the canal's easy. And sure, if everyone tells you everything's easy, it's kind of easy to take your eye off the ball. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, it definitely feels easier kicking into the canal. Whether it is or not is yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it, that's it's like, just it seems I think it's, that's it's more enclosed. I think and. Rather than into the hill, it's, it's open and it's definitely a bit swirly down, down towards the hill end, I think. Yeah. You were speaking after, um, I think it was after the final, you were speaking and you said that, you know, when you're a young fella, you're dreaming of playing in Crow Park and taking strikes, but when you're in Crow Park, you're actually yeah. trying to put your mindset <laughs> into being the back in Khmer as a kid. Like, it struck me that you have to be very good at pretending when you're a free taker. About that, like, when you were young, every kick you take down the pitch, you know, you're, you pretend that there's a full crowd there and that. The pressure's on, like every every free you're thinking it's the last kick of the game to win. But when you're in Crow Park, then it's probably a bit different. You probably don't want that. You don't want that pressure. You want to try and, and get away from it and to just take the kick on its own merits rather than what time of the game is it or what part of the game it is. Um, so just pretending you're back home in Kimmer, like you've done hundreds of times, thousands of times, is it's probably a, a nice place to get the head into. And are you legitimately thinking about that? You're not like when you're putting the ball down in the 72nd minute. The dubs have been coming at you for. 12 minutes in the All Ireland Centre. Oh, it's definitely hard. Like you know, you, you try, but did you block everything out, or what did you do? Like, what was your? Can you remember anything from that minute? Not a whole pile. Not a whole pile. Um, the only thing I really remember was Paddy Clifford was beside me, and he was just saying, "Look, don't try and force this. The ball is travelling. Just get a normal strike, and at your distance, we'll get you there. Just get a nice strike, and the rest will take care of it." And that was the only thing I can remember from that. that, whole minute, that 90 seconds. He was just beside me in the air, and I was like, "You're actually right here. Yeah, don't try and force this. Just do." Do a normal kick. Now, obviously, it was a bit further out, and I like to curl the ball. So I was saying, just throw it out to the right inside the post. The wind's coming into the into the Hogan, so throw it well out and leave leave the wind do the rest, and just try and get a, a good strike. And yeah. thankfully, I got a clean contact on it. Yeah. <laughs> Tiger leader, you might take the lead here now. You're going to talk us through an American football place kick. Yeah. The wind definitely posed a challenge there, so we're going to bring it over here a little bit. So kickers are uh, kickers are so specific in terms of I was saying chatting earlier. Um, if you if you miss two or three kicks in training camp or in training, you you literally your head's on the chopping block and you get fired because it, it's your contracts are not guaranteed. So that's why you always want to make sure this lad's called the holder. Make sure he does his job so because no, <laughs> I suppose to do it properly, but like this, right, right knee down, yeah, and you're like this. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Right, you trust us, Tommy. So. 
I guess for now, we were, we were chatting about it earlier. Um, we were chatting about it earlier that this, this pitch is kind of a bit uh, grabby. Usually when we're coming through the contact, you kind of catch a little bit of turf, like, like, like he did. Um, a lot of the football fields, there's, there's, more, there's a little bit more give, meaning almost like kicking on grass. So just your, your foot angle is not going to be compromised when you, when you catch turf. You can still, it will still stay you know, straight to target versus, I don't know, I find myself kind of kicking. And sometimes when I hit the turf there, my foot angle changed. So I think the, the big thing is for, for us as we're coming through, we're always taught toe down. So your toe should be toe lower than your heel just to expose, to obviously expose the knuckle, you know, the, the, the knuckle of our foot just to get a nice strong contact. Um, You're so not going to take do, my finger off here, are you? You just don't move your finger and close your eyes. You don't need to worry about it. So three back, two to the side. Um, when I first, I, my background's rugby. I'd usually be back here taking conversions and I'd roll back and I'd take my few steps in. When I moved to football, I realized I had to stand here because you have, you have 1.3 seconds from when the ball snapped to the ball kicked. So you're approaching a ball that isn't there. So your first step, ball's not there, your foot lands, the ball will probably start to appear. And then this fella has like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to get it down, twist it and get it off. So it's, it's very quick. So for the, for the sake of this, we'll just start nice and close. Short one, short one step, then two strong steps. So it's little jab, two, three. And you're just trying to kick it as, stra as straight as possible. Because we, we can't afford to have any um, bend in the ball. Coaches, coaches don't like that. Just as straight as possible. So he doesn't want any curl at all? No curl. Okay. So I guess how we try and eradicate that is... Let's turn so it down again. I guess the coaching trigger we get a lot is just finish forward. So like I'll, ex I'll, I'll, I'll exaggerate here, but a lot of time is just finishing towards target. So I'm kind of visualizing the snaps coming. Short jab step. Um, and you want to get that like nice clean end over end. Even if you score a kick, but it doesn't go over the middle, you're kind of yourself, you're not happy. Same thing with field goals. If you score, but the ball's a bit X-y, you know, our ideal ball's flight like this. If it's a bit X-y, it's just more susceptible to wind catching it because it's a bigger surface area. So in terms of training, we're judged on everything's timed. Every, every, everything you do is you know, recorded, timed. But even if you score, they still call it an X ball. You don't want to score too many X balls. In training now, we do one, two, three, one, two, shoulder width, your steps to the side or shoulder width. And you know, we would measure with the measuring tape. The you know, they'd be measuring, the coach would just come out randomly and just stop you and just measure. And you, you know, expect it to be the same, the same distance every time from the ball. So you know, you're consistent in that. Um, and then, as I said, we're, we're GA, we're kind of more here, um, whereas we're, we're lots, lots square to target. And then regardless of the distance, it's, it's jab step. This is called a jab. It's jab to drive and just try and get as straight, as straight to target as possible with, with their with their whole body momentum to target. Same idea in my background's rugby, same idea in rugby as well, like shift weight to target, put it through the ball. All right, we get going with a kick. Get going with the kick. Let's go first, lads. Johnny, you're there. Do you want to stick with the holding since you were nailing it there? I have no problem doing it, yeah. You're on a streak here. <laughs> All right. So go on, give three me steps, three, three back and two to the side. So you'll probably feel a bit close. And I have nothing to worry about here when Sean O'Shea is striking this ball. don't worry, he'll, he'll, he'll nudge and it through. You're kind of kicking that, that kind of shape? Uh, ideally, ideally your toe, uh, um, we think hard foot and toe down. So just like, like or, 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 um, they want to see that ankle flex throughout the kick. And three steps in? Uh, for the sake of this, go three steps in, yeah. There you go. Easy as that. That, was, that wasn't an X-ball, was it? No, it was that clean. Was that was a good strike. Clean, clean, clean rotation. I know you're trying to carbon copy what you're doing here. But and then obviously, like, he, you went very slow into it. Would you go that slow into it or would you run into it? No. You, uh, you know, it, it's so like realistically, we'd pro I'd probably be like here, and you just like set your your, your tempos like always consistent because they, yeah, they don't want you being too aggressive because I, I think sometimes if you're too aggressive, you know, you might over you might overstride in this one or you might overstride in one of your steps and then, you know, you could be a little bit off when, when it comes to striking. So they talk about just like just kind of very controlled. You just it's just like a like a brisk walk almost. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> Still counts. <laughs> he was very hard. It's close. Yeah. I was like, cause my first yeah, step was, I was, I was on the left or right leg. Yeah, should have been right foot. Yeah. If I took my right foot there, it would have been. You staggered I, the run up. Because yeah. when I lifted, <laughs> it might have got blocked. It would have been left, right, all the way there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the run up. Just, uh, yeah. the There's probably so much variables in it as well because you're not placing the ball for yourself. You know, when we're kicking freeze, we get to place the ball, we know where it is. Whereas you're waiting for someone yeah. to put it down for you and you don't know where it's going to be when you're in the run up, like, which is probably the toughest part. So ideally, 
So, uh, when I, so again, in, in rugby, I had all the time in the world. I'd set the ball on the tee and I'd lean it a little bit out. Um, you mentioned Johnny Wilkinson, he did the same, but on the left. Mm. Um, just an idea, a lot of kickers do it to kind of hopefully square the kick up a little bit. So right foot, you'd lean it a little bit towards you. And that's why I like it in American football. But obviously for my holder, when he catches it, like I'm already, I'm in motion by now when he's here. And sometimes the laces could be back here. So he's to catch it, place it, twist it, and then get like the lean in, as I say, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a sec. I can't do this bit. It's, it's unreal. It's unreal about, um, how quick they can go about it. It's usually quarterbacks because yeah, they have good hands. But uh, yeah, as you said, some, I've, come, I've come into a ball to kick it and the ball's just like, you no, know, just looking back at me like this and you know, the laces are out. So that's... that's you can't strike it like that, can you? That's the last thing you want. What happens you, if you strike it like that? Does it mess it up completely? Is that, yeah. that much of a difference? Yeah, yeah. you're not going to get okay. high because remember you have six foot six, six foot seven yes. big lads trying to block you as well. We'll make it, e we'll make it easier on the lads, make it consistent. You'll set that up, will you? Yeah. I thought Tommy was doing an excellent job. Thanks lads, I was actually afraid <laughs> of losing fingers. <laughs> The run up is sketchy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's how I felt like the Gaelic, Gaelic footballs. I was a mile back. Nice, there you go. That's, that's a strike. That's like a good clean, clean ball. How do you find the strike? Is it weird? The strike movement? is okay. It's it's getting into this. Uh, okay. The walk up, the run up. It's weird, like yeah. You want to just go full belt and try and drive. Yeah, and remember, you only you only have one point three seconds. Is that it? From snap to kick, the okay. whole thing. Nice. Strike, lads. Nice, there you go. Okay. We can make it a bit more realistic if you want. When you're, you're approaching a ball that isn't there, you know, until it is there, which is the last second. So a little drill we often do is, you know, we're, you go through your motion. We're blocking the ball. And then obviously last second, you just appear. At least you know where the ball's going to be and it's going to be sitting pretty for you. So it's, tight, yeah. it's, it's a mental test, really. Biggest, yeah. big, biggest part of the job. Like you're speaking about training there and like being afraid biggest, to miss kicks. Biggest part of the job. Nice, no, great. It's going to come in for you. Oh, That's going sharp. to make it. Just short. You're, you're playing tricks on me here now. Playing tricks on, yeah. I, but I'll, I'll let you get back and see it and get set before. All right, grand. Won't move. It won't move exactly. It won't move. Jeez, the walk up is more likely to pump me than you. <laughs> what am I doing here again now? Oh, yeah, you, your three step looked good last time. Remember you? Nice. Yeah. What, what I did? Oh, I'm probably going too long there again. Yeah, no, I'm going too long there. Jeez. There actually is a knack to it, isn't there? Oh, <laughs> yeah, there is. There definitely is. I'm gonna go. No, I always go this way. Well, I chance to redeem yourself, Shane Walsh. <laughs> it's great to have the time, isn't it? Oh yeah, wait. Here we go. No. Okay. Rate the boys out of ten, Tyke. Ah, I give them a, a seven and room to improve. Okay. For hand, I mean, you knocked us. Oh, it's forty-five. Yeah. You, you, very, very seldom would you kick back this far in a game. Okay. Um, like, like we were chatting for you lads, taking kicks from the sideline. Obviously, it's not a high percentage play. Sa same idea. When you get back beyond like 50 yards, a lot of teams won't, won't kick it because it's, it's just you don't want to lose possession. So, no, I think that was handy. I think that was very, pretty, good, pretty good considering it's the first time on the job for both the lads. So, okay. you never know. Could we see them in the, in the NFL once, <laughs> they're, fin once they're finished with the Gaelic football?